Good, happy Tuesday morning. I'm Riley King, and welcome to Good Morning, New Hampshire. Let's get started. First up, many likely voters undecided eight days before Election Day. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9. Education and a full campus life can provide the skills, the connections, and purpose to change the world. Your work for the better. See yourself at NHTI. Visit our open house November 2nd from 4 to 6.30 p.m. With polls opening a week from tomorrow, voters are running out of time to make up their minds. Many of them haven't, despite months of campaigning. I'm going to wait right till the very last minute, the last day. We haven't quite made up our minds yet because we're still trying to do a bit of research. The latest WMUR Granite State poll shows a tightening race for the White House. In New Hampshire's Senate race, even closer with Democrat Maggie Hassan leading Republican Kelly Ayotte 44 to 43 percent. But among likely voters who were polled, 40% haven't made their final decision. And in the governor's race, even more likely voters, 50%, haven't made their final decision, with Democrat Colin Van Ostern leading Republican Chris Sununu by five points. I think I would look for a candidate that's backing the presidential candidates, no matter you know what their party affiliate is. I think they should be going with their party affiliate. But then every day you hear something different. So, I mean, I, you know, it kind of swings me around a little bit. Because of the presidential race, political analyst Dean Spiliotis says Granite Staters might be less familiar with local candidates and could be unpredictable next Tuesday. Undecided voters at this point often tend to be people who are, they're less involved in politics on a regular basis. They don't pay quite as close attention to it on a daily basis. They may make a decision based on less information. He says the turning point may come for many over the next few days. That final weekend and kind of just a sort of general feeling about whether one candidate has momentum could make the difference. Though undecided voters may not know right now how they'll fill out their ballots, there is something they all agree on. Oh yeah, I can't wait till it's over. Political analysts are also looking for whether there's more split voting this cycle, meaning that we could see more people vote for a mix of Democrats and Republicans rather than voting down the ballot for just one party. Live in the studio, Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. And if you are a undecided voter, I would like to hear from you and interview you. Just comment below under this live stream video or under this video here of under Good Morning New Hampshire. Comment below and let me know if you are undecided voter. Anonymous donor gifts 18000 for body cameras for Lebanon police. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9. Programs and a full campus life to engage, inspire, and prepare you to better yourself and your world. Envision the future you really want at NHTI. Visit our open house November 2nd from 4 to 6.30 p.m. Technical difficulties with that video. The Lebanon Police Department received 18000 from an anonymous donor to buy body cameras for police officers. Chief Richard Mello said it's one of the most generous gifts they ever received. The money will buy 10 body cameras for the department along with necessary essentials. Hardware, installing, and training. Mela said the generous donor is older and is a longtime resident motivated out of her own concern for police on patrol. The use of body cameras is a local decision in New Hampshire 
Police departments in Ware and Goffstown are already using body cameras. Recent video of police shootings have triggered unrest around the country. Mello said some of his officers have expressed concerns about the cameras. The cameras can be turned on manually, but they will also be activated through a cruiser's emergency light, so police encounter with the public in town will go on the record. Lebanon police officers should have body cameras up and running in the next couple of months. Everyone thought it was over. The FBI spent more than a year in What's next for the FBI's renewed investigation into Clinton's email server? Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. Over. The FBI spent more than a year investigating whether Hillary Clinton's use of a private server to do government business violated the law. In July, the FBI director in a dramatic press conference concluded no laws were broken, but issued a blistering assessment of Hillary's judgment, basically calling her reckless and careless. But in October, a stunning new twist that's sordid in nature. Sources tell us that the FBI investigation into whether Anthony Weiner engaged in a sexting scandal with an underage girl has resulted in new questions about Clinton. Weiner is the estranged husband of Uma Abedin, one of Clinton's closest advisors. Sources say a device shared by the couple contains thousands of emails that could be pertinent to the earlier probe of Clinton. Even though there's no evidence of wrongdoing by Clinton, the FBI director decided that the Bureau must scrutinize all these emails to see if they contain classified information and are tied to Clinton's private server. It's a political drama unlike anything we've seen so close to the end of an election. Pierre Thomas, ABC News, Washington. Okay, and there you go on that report. Stocks start November with election headwinds. Absent another campaign shocker, stocks could continue to trade horizontally paralyzed by uncertain ahead of the election. Mosul, Iraq PM vows to chop the head off the snake. Let's take a listen to this video from CNN. What seems destined to be a vicious and bloody final showdown, Iraqi troops could at any moment enter Mosul, which has been under ISIS control for more than two years. The terrorist group has left the trail of death and destruction ever since coalition forces loosened its grip on the city. As many as 5,000 ISIS terrorists are said to be holed up in and around Mosul, ready to fight to the death. Let's get right to CNN senior international correspondent Nick Payton Wall. She's in Erbil, Iraq. Nick, you've embedded on the front lines with Iraqi and Kurdish troops since the offensive began. What are the conditions like on the ground right now? It is tough moving down that road from the east of Mosul towards the city limits themselves. Iraqi military loud on the rhetoric today saying they're nipping at those city limits in certain areas. Suggestions from residents in the sort of outer suburbs, if you like, a city proper, that yes, uh, they are hearing gunshots. They are seeing Iraqi armor nearby, airstrikes following them too. But it's going to be a hard fight. And we saw ourselves intense resistance on Saturday night that we observed on that May Road. Uh, they've headed into the remainder of the village, Bazwire, near where we were, uh, certainly. Uh, but it isn't clear if this is part of a broader bid by the Iraqi military to show they're owning the narrative, to kind of take back, if you like, from the coalition suggestions a few days ago they should pause and consolidate their rear to make sure they're not attacked from behind as they move further into the urban sprawl. Haider al-Abadi, the Iraqi prime minister, very vociferously saying they'll cut off the head of the snake here, appealing to most residents to stay indoors. And Jake, another part of this narrative to what's happening inside the city. Well, we know there are 1.2 million civilians there who are at risk of being caught in the crossfire or used as human shields. 
What's slightly more off the radar is the insurrection potentially beginning there. We've known and spoken to resistance fighters who are waiting for what they call zero hour. Well, in the last 24 hours, some senior ISIS officials have been shot dead in drive-by uh, incidents in that city. One ISIS position attacked as well. Is this the beginning of that insurrection? Is the zero hour now upon those people? Will that change the equation when it comes to how long ISIS can resist the Iraqi advance? All unknowns. What's pretty certain, though, is the episode of the fighting inside the urban sprawl of Mosul will be certainly bloodier than the already pretty complicated advance they've had across the deserted plains around the city itself, Jake. Nick, obviously ISIS is not going to go down without a fight to the death. What types of countermeasures are they taking to defend their stronghold in Mosul, which they've controlled for more than two years? You couldn't believe, Jake, the sheer volume of booby traps and mines laid everywhere. In almost every house in the village we were in, they have to clear it painstakingly. You never know if the soft toy on the floor is linked to a bomb or is simply something a child discarded as they fled. It's very hard for people to return to life there. It's very hard for Iraqi soldiers simply to move through areas. And that's in the deserted villages that, frankly, ISIS don't care so much about. Imagine what they've got in store for Iraqi security forces in the city proper, a densely packed urban environment, many civilians caught in there, urban street-to-street -street fighting hard enough at the best of times, the best equipped militaries, Iraq's security forces, special forces that we saw, a brave job indeed, courageous, but facing a tough fight ahead certainly inside that city, Jake. All right, Nick Peyton Walsh in Erbil, just recently embedded with Iraqi forces trying to recapture Mosul. Thank you so much, Nick. Please stay safe over there. Okay, and there you go on that report. And now time for your weather. Let's take a live look on radar right now. As you see on radar, we have a few clouds hovering over New Hampshire for today. And it will be just a cloudy day. No rain showers with it. So that is good. And now let's take a look at your weather on our weather system. Your weather on our weather system, your wind speed peak is 3 miles per hour, average is 0, current is 0 from the west. Your temperature is 27 degrees, humidity is 91%, your dew point is 25 degrees, your forecast is partly cloudy, your pressure is 30.18. And now let's take a look at your next 7 day forecast. And here's a look at your next seven-day forecast. Your weather for today, lighter, breezy, 51 degrees. And now let's take a look at your traffic. Here's a look at your traffic right now. We're seeing a lot of green roadways, and we have a few yellow areas and a few tiny red areas. Otherwise, your traffic is moving pretty good on your Tuesday morning. And we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with more of Good Morning New Hampshire. Don't go anywhere.